For more than 30 years, visitors to the Denver Museum of Nature and Science have been able to enjoy the wonder, the whimsy, and the artistry of Vasily Konovalenko's gem carving sculptures. The display in Denver is the best and largest in the world. In today's video, museum scientist Steve Nash shares the results of his research on Konovalenko's work. I began working here at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science in 2006. As I walked the museum to learn more about this dynamic and exciting place, I stumbled upon this exhibition, Konovlenko, Gem Carvings of Russian Folklife. I walked in and was immediately struck by these fascinating pieces of art. Their splendor, their color, their beauty, their technical sophistication. Museum visitors always appreciate the aesthetics of these wonderful sculptures, but they don't always understand what they mean. So let's take a look at a few sculptures in detail so we can really understand what Konovalenko was up to. First sculpture I want to share with you is Gold Prospectors. It's the only Konovalenko sculpture with an American theme. In it, we see two dynamic, wizened, old gold miners fruitlessly panning away in the Colorado mountains looking for gold in a cold river stream. The younger man is standing up, his right hand, and he's pinching something between his forefinger and his thumb and that's probably a gold flake that he thinks is the indication that they've hit the mother load, that the discovery is coming. The older man who's kneeling down is looking up at him and saying, yeah, we've heard this story before, I'm not so sure that you're going to be right, but I'll listen to you again. When Konovalenko finished this sculpture, or thought it was finished, he included only the two men panning away. When Alvin Cohen, the donor who gave these sculptures to the museum, saw it, he said, you know what, I don't think it's quite finished yet. Would you add a donkey to it? And Konovalenko went back to the drawing board and designed a donkey. He modeled it out of clay, and then he made it out of stone. And what a wonderful donkey it is. Look at the expressive face, the eyes, the neck, the blankets, the, the equipment on this. This is one of Konovalenko's crowning glory sculptures. And again, it's the only one with an American theme to it. The second sculpture I want to share with you is called Wanderer. It's actually misnamed. When I first looked at it, I thought this man was homeless. When I asked Mrs. Konovalenko about this, I found out how wrong I actually was. In 1666, the Russian Orthodox Church split, and some reforms were introduced that old believers did not like, they didn't believe in. And the way that this is indicated is by the man's hand signal. He's holding up two fingers, not three. And the two fingers represent the Father and the Son, but not the Holy Ghost. You can see that he's walking along, chanting, holding up his hand signals, and so on. But it's a wonderful sculpture. And in fact, if you look at close up at the man's eyes, you can see it's the first time that Konovalenko used three different stones to, to make an eye in a sculpture, and you can see how much more expressive they really are. They look truly human. The third sculpture I want to share with you is called Laundress. It's beautiful in its, in its simplicity. It shows a peasant girl staring off into space, resigned to the monotonous plight of laundry day. The base that Konovalenko made is, is one single piece of malachite. The pool of water in which she's washing the clothes is made out of agate. And then you can see she's got a purple piece of clothing here, a pyrite base, and so on. One of the reasons that this sculpture is so interesting and so fascinating is it, because it demonstrates Konovalenko's mastery of Bellaret's quartz, which is the quartz out of which all of her skin is made, her face, her arms, her legs, and so on. But a close-up of her face shows um, resigned contentedness. She's not unhappy about what she has to be doing. She's not excited about it either. But one of the things that I really like about this sculpture is the feminine touch that Konovalenko put on here in the form of a delicate pearl necklace around her neck. It contrasts sharply with the masculine robusticity of her back and hands and forearms. It's a wonderful, simple piece. In November 2014, the Konovalenko family came to Denver to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the exhibition going on display. Dr. Tatyana Munchen, Fabergé Collection Curator and Senior Researcher at the Kremlin Museum in Moscow, also joined in the festivities. For this event, museum photographer Rick Wicker and I were able to publish this, the first ever catalog of the Denver Museum of Nature and Science Konovalenko pieces. It's available at lulu.com and it contains answers to the questions that you may have about this wonderful collection. 